me to take them out now. Too far into it to back out, so I'll just go ahead. From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. that are here and our regular people that are here thank you for coming it's preaching time Amen. take your bibles if you want turn to the book of first corinthians chapter number 15 first corinthians chapter number 15 Amen. then look at verse number 50 first corinthians chapter 15 verse number 50 are you there? Okay, if you are not there, just look intelligently at the page in front of you and ask somebody after church is over where 1 Corinthians is. 1550, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Uh, the sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Call your attention again to verse number 57. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, thank you for this privilege, God, that you have gave us to preach this morning, this Easter morning, Resurrection Sunday. Lord, I pray that you'd be able to, and I know you can, help us. Give us grace, Father, to preach today. In Jesus' name, amen. I told the group that was here a while ago, it's not a, a usual thing for angels to preach in a New Testament setting. They, they generally don't do it. They, they'd preached in the Old Testament. And they were warriors in the Old Testament. But the first one to tell us about the victory over death was the angel that was stationed there at the grave of the Lord Jesus Christ. And basically, what we preach today, 2,000 years after the fact, is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has conquered death and hell and the grave. There is no religion in the world that makes such a claim. Amen. If you were lost in the desert somewhere and you were traveling along trying to, to find uh, uh, your way out and you came to uh, uh, Muhammad uh, and then... Uh, you're in need of directions. How do I get out of this place? I can't tell up from down, north, from south, east, from west. And you were going to, I'm talking about 2015. You would come face to face with Muhammad. Well, I know where you'd be. Because he's one place. Let that sink in a minute. If you were to come uh, upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you could be in a different desert, in a different continent, in a different place. And you want to ask directions. Who would you ask? 
Would you ask Muhammad? He's dead. He couldn't answer. Amen. He's got to have these jihadists to defend him. He's not able to defend himself. Or would you ask Jesus, who in 2015 is not dead, but's alive and has the victory over hell and death. Amen. Muslims take us to the pilgrims to Medina, and there you can find the tomb of Muhammad. Yeah. One time years ago, I had the privilege and opportunity to go to Jerusalem and look at the tomb of Jesus. I saw it. There's a difference between those tombs. Amen. One of them, there's a man laying there. The other, he's not there, but he rose just like he said he would. Victory is what I'm saying. If you was uh, uh, to uh, uh, come, no other religion teaches a resurrection from the grave. No other religion has a, a spirit of God to indwell us. The reason you can't live for God is because you're not saved. If you were saved, God would supply you the ability to live for Him. The Spirit of God will indwell you and walk with you and talk with you and speak to you every day of your life. No one can live a Christian life without the aid of the Holy Ghost of God. It's just an impossible thing. People come to me and they say, well, I'd be a Christian, but I can't live it. You're right. You can't. And I can't. And the very best Christian you know can't. But when Jesus Christ sends his Holy Ghost into your life and into your heart, he can help you and aid you as you walk with him along this way. If you were to go to the Buddha and you were to, uh, uh, well, he can give you a set of morals, but he cannot give you the power to enforce them. God can not only give you a standard, but he can give you the power to enforce that standard because of the resurrection, because of the victory that's in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Christian religion seeks people out. The living Savior works on convincing us of sin. Luke chapter 19 verse 10 said, He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Other religions, man seeks God, tries to set up some image that they have of God. But I thank you that that night many years ago down there at the old Baptist church at Camels Creek, the Lord Jesus came by looking for me. I wasn't looking for him. He was looking for me. Amen. Job 11 says, uh, Canst thou by a search and find out God? You can't find God by you looking for Him. I mean, if you look for Him because you're lost, you look in the wrong places. God is not in an idol. God is not in a statue or a test tube. You can't find Him. The only way you can find Him is whenever He comes by your heart and knocks on your door and says, Hey, I'm here to talk to you today. Aren't you glad, Christian? Aren't you glad He came by your way? Jesus conquered death. I, I want to preach about that. Jesus conquered death. That's what we celebrate on this Easter day, Resurrection Sunday. We, we preach about Jesus who has conquered death. <coughs> Number one, he conquered physical death. Uh, he, he was able to, to have the power over death even before he died. That was the time they were having a funeral. And this widow of Nain was going out there and she had her only son. And they were going out to bury him because he died. One preacher looked one time trying to find out how Jesus conducted funerals. He had a funeral to conduct and he said, I'm going to go to the Bible and see what Jesus did with funerals. Did you ever check it out, what Jesus does with funerals? Amen. He came up there to that buyer Amen. And when he touched the bar, the dead guy set up. I'm, I'm saying he didn't preach funerals. He was not into death. He was into life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He went over to Jairus' daughter and he raised 
her from the dead. Uh, he went to the tomb of Lazarus and raised him from the dead. Uh, uh, but the most exciting thing to me was that when he raised his own self from the dead, by his victorious power, he raised his own self from the dead. And the Bible said that the grave split open and many of the saints that slept, can you imagine that after his resurrection they went into town? I, I can't imagine. All right, here is Abraham laying there and Sarah laying there by his side and uh, uh, the grave splits open. Abraham uh, kind of elbows Sarah and said, Hey, honey, get me some breakfast. <laughs> that, that's the wrong translation. But, but anyway, uh, uh, he said, It's time to get up. Uh, and after his resurrection, they got up and they, they went into the city and appeared to many. Can you imagine that? You're walking down the, down the street and there appears somebody that you know been dead for years. That's because Jesus had the victory. He has promised to raise us from the dead. Our text said, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. He conquered physical death. And then let me say that, number two, he conquered spiritual death. You see, in Ephesians chapter 2, he talks about being saved. And he said, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, amen. Jesus is life. Uh, that life is the light of men. Uh, and if you've got problems that you can't handle, I'm telling you that Jesus can supply things that you know not of. Uh, to be without him uh, is to be in darkness. Uh, uh, to walk uh, according to the course of this world. Uh, uh, the prince of the power of the air. The children that now work, uh, uh, the spirit that now worketh in disobedience. Uh, and I'm saying, but to be with him, he calls us out of darkness and puts us in light and he gives us a victory over the spiritual death that had claim on us. I remember when I was spiritually dead, do you? I mean, you just done the same things that everybody else does. But, you know, in the, in the Bible it says we're called out of that darkness into light. We're called to be saints. They called them Christians at Antioch. And they, that, was a, that was a derogatory term, like calling a, a, a somebody a Nazarene. I, I discussed that this morning. I won't re-preach my message, but we're called many different names in the Bible. I've been called some that ain't in the Bible. But, but we call, we've been called saints, we've been called brethren, been called believers, been called the church, been called Nazarenes, Galileans, anointed, a lot of things we've been called. But the greatest thing that ever I was called when Jesus said, I came your way to call you out of darkness into light. A Christian is somebody that studies to follow and obey the precepts of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us victory. He gave us victory over physical death and he gave us victory over eternal death. Uh, amen. When we believe the gospel, we gain the victory over spiritual death. To believe the report is to obey the gospel. If you believe it, you'll do something about it. You see, that's the difference between what we call easy believism and salvation is if you really believe it, you'll do something about it. Say, I told you this building is on fire. Amen. Is it easy to understand that if you believed me, you'd leave? Now, you might say, well, I don't believe the preacher lied to me. You might say, well, I believe it's on fire, but I got time. You know, we'll let everybody else get out. But if I said, hey, man, this building's on fire. If you believe what I told you, you'd say, I got to get out of here. Don't you know this world is going up in smoke one of these days. And if you believe that, you'll want to get out of it and you'll want to go where the Lord is. To believe the report is to obey. To obey is to hear that produces results. Uh, uh, that whenever you hear something that actually causes you to do something about it. Amen. Jesus gave us the victory over spiritual death. And then let me say that Jesus gave us the victory over eternal death. There is a death in the Bible that's called the second death. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part 
in the first resurrection upon whom the second death hath no power. There is a first resurrection and there is a second resurrection. The first resurrection is for all of the saints of God. The second resurrection would be for all those who are not the saints of God. And that's the second of death. Uh, it said in Revelation, uh, uh, the second death hath no power on him. But in ver uh, verse 14 of chapter 20, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Separation from God, exclusion forever from the gracious presence of God. I can't imagine that. I'm glad I'm saved, children. I'm glad that I'll never have to hear him say, Depart from me into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I'm glad I'm saved. You see, Adam's sin caused, uh, caused our birth to be estranged from God. We were born in sin. It's just as normal for us to sin as it is for a bird to fly. People talk about, well, we've got a little bit of light in us. No, we don't have any light in us. We're born in darkness. We're shaping in iniquity. And we just go to sin like a hog goes to slop. We go to sin like a dog goes to a water. I'm saying it's just a normal thing because of Adam. But did you know that through this Easter God has made reconciliation with us. Uh, uh, that through the gospel, we have been reconciled to God. We beseech you uh, uh, by the mercies of God that you present your body as a sacrifice. He said uh, that we are ambassadors for Christ. As I stand up here today, I'm, I'm representing another country. And I'm telling you uh, that we ha have the commandment from God to tell you, you can be reconciled to God. You do not have to die the eternal death. You can this morning have everlasting life because Jesus has made it possible. He made it possible by the resurrection from the dead. Uh, uh, the Bible said that we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. As Christians, we'll appear there, but, but as the lost, Matthew 25, 41, they will have to appear and be judged for the give account. People say, well, I want just what's coming to me. Oh, man, not me. Amen. I want mercy. I threw myself on the mercy of the court years ago, and I cried out and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'd hate to have to give account for all of my wickedness. Amen. For all of the times that I've lied. And, and what a Sunday school teacher taught us this morning, we all lie. We, you know, a uh, husband, the wife comes in and says, does this dress look me fat, make me look fat? What, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> yeah, babe, sure does. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. If you didn't have no dress on, you'd still look fat. <laughs> uh, the, you see, we all lie. <laughs> we lie because it gets us out of trouble. One fellow said, a lie is an abomination in the sight of God, but a very present help in time of trouble. <laughs> if we think, and you know we'll, we'll, we'll lie about, uh, 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 preachers will lie about, uh, how many was in church last night? How many you got? Amen. You ask them, say, how many are you running? I, well, I'm running about three or four hundred. I'm catching about 50 or 60. Amen. Are you talking who, who all's come in this year? Or are you talking about who attends regularly on Sunday? We all lie, amen. But listen, that there are worse lies than those little white lies. We'll lie about things that are serious. And I'm not trying to make any, any distinction between one and another because they're all dark in God's sight. But you know, to be angry... Uh, without a cause is a sin. Do you know your new Bible, your NASV, do you know it makes a sinner out of Jesus? Because it says that Jesus was angry. Amen. And to be angry is to sin. But I'm glad I got a Bible that said angry without a cause. You see, he had a cause to be angry. When he came in that temple, 
And he saw what they'd done to his father's house. He had just cause to take that whip and run them out of that place. And it was a righteous indignation. It was not a sinful anger like you and I have. Well, I get mad just because I got out on the wrong side of the bed. Now, I know y'all don't do that, but I do. I just, I just get mad because I'm just not feeling good today. Amen. If you, if you mess with me, I'll give you a piece of my mind. One preacher told me, you don't need to give your mind away. I mean, you know, you've got just barely enough to get by now. And if you go giving parts of it away, hey man, you're not going to have any left. But I'm saying that the things that are written in those Ten Commandments are written there to show you that you are a sinner and that if you do not get right with God, that you'll never have eternal life. But because of Jesus, eternal death is not my product because he took my sins and my sorrows and he on the cross paid the penalty that I deserve to pay. I should have been crucified, but he died in my place. While he was hanging there, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You ever read that? I know why. I know exactly why God turned his back on Jesus. He turned his back on him because Jesus took my sins. And when God saw the sin on his own son, amen, God saw his own son as a sinner and he turned his back on him and left him to suffer and die alone. Hey, it wasn't only my sin, friend. It was your sin. It was the sins of the whole world. He's the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Uh, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, the Bible said, I saw a lamb as it had been slain. That was years after Calvary, and he still bore the marks of the slaughter. He bears them today. When I get to glory, I expect to see those nail prints in his hands. And every time I see them, I'll be reminded of the fact that it had not been for the Lamb, I would never be going to heaven. But like that old crowd, the whole group, a multitude, will sing there, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. He bore our eternal punishment, and he gives us eternal life. Eternal life cannot be found from Genesis to Malachi. Do you know that? Whenever you start this thing, you can't, then nobody has eternal life. Nobody. Eternal life shows up when Jesus shows up. And when he shows up, he is life. You can be born once and die twice. Or you can be born twice and die once. Maybe not even once if the saints are raptured out of here. Amen. He gave us victory today. He gave us victory over death. He gave us victory over physical death. He gave us victory over spiritual death. He gave us victory over eternal death. The second death. I've got the victory over it because Jesus signed my pardon. Amen. I read about this man in... uh, Uh, Back in the uh, 1800s, the fellow's name was Wilson. I'm sure he wasn't. No, I'm not sure he wasn't kin to me. But anyway, he was was accused of a capital crime and was uh, sentenced to hang. The governor took a pardon and put it in the Bible, closed the Bible up and walked over to Mr. Wilson in his cell and gave him a Bible. And the man said, I don't need a Bible, I need a pardon. The governor said, everything you need is right there in that book. I don't need the book, I need a pardon. You know what? If he had opened the book, there was a pardon there. Listen to me. Listen to me today. I want to close with this. You've got a pardon. You do not have to die the second death. You can live forever. God has gave you a pardon in this book. 
He said, Acts 16, 31, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved. I can be saved if we'll call on his name. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, John chapter 1 says, As many as received him, to them gave he the power, the authority to become the Son of God just by receiving what Jesus did. We celebrate Easter. We, we as Baptists, we celebrate Easter as a, as a Resurrection Sunday. I don't, I, some other time I might preach to you about the pagan holiday of Easter, but now we're talking about Resurrection Sunday, that Jesus, amen, last uh, yesterday was a blood moon. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's, raise your peaky little hand and say, I know what a blood moon. Yesterday was one supposed to be, uh, I was going to go look at it and it was cloudy and I couldn't see it. But it, it was supposed to be a, a total eclipse of the moon that, that, that turns to, it makes it turn red, turns like it's bloody. Did that on, on Easter weekend, if you will. The moon's totally eclipsed because the earth gets between it and the sun. Is that right? My science doing pretty good there. And when the earth gets between me and the Son of God, my light goes out too. I don't have nothing but a, a bloody moon. Amen. But thanks be to God, He gave us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you will just to bow your heads at this time. Again, I do thank you so much for coming to church on Easter, on Easter Sunday that you came uh, to be with us, and we're glad you're here.